What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Generic Wolf. Welcome to some more Bosnia Reacts to Geography Now, Thailand this time. Okay, so it's been a while, but finally I'm back, or should I say, Ung back. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. But um, I, I've wore a tie before, so I have good ties with Thailand. <laughs> but anyway, what was I doing this past uh, month or so? Well, I was actually on a trip with my long-term girlfriend. And I proposed to her, and she said yes, and I am engaged. So that happened. Just an FYI, I tended to keep my private life private separate from the videos. As you all know, I don't really talk much about my family or friends really on the channel because I, I want this channel to be about education and learning, not so much about me and my personal life. But I think that's something, you know, that I should notify you guys about. So yeah, I'm now engaged. Uh, expected to marry. So I am older than a lot of you think out there, so... If you're some people out there are thinking like, hey, wait, are you like 18 or 19 years old? No, I'm actually 27, almost 28. This August I'll turn 28. So yeah, I know it must be the the Bosnian genetics, but anyway, I am uh, getting too ahead of myself. Thailand, this is an exciting country, uh, one of the most uh, interesting countries, if you ask me, in, in all of Southeast Asia. But uh, let's just go ahead and get right into the video. Let's see what's so great about Thailand. So I don't even really have to give much of an introduction. You've all heard of Thailand. This country is the 21st century tourism powerhouse that took the world by mm. storm. Will I do my best for this entire video? Yes, I am. So if you're oh, feeling yes, crabby, don't poo-cat what time it is. <laughs> Porn. Wow. It's what? Time to learn geography. You okay, Barbs? Due to continuity issues, we have to film this out of sequence. Hey, everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Get your Geography Now merchandise at geographynow.com. It's not selling out if it's your brand. Thailand, the land. Oh, I should show you guys something. Be right back. Feast your eyes upon. Da -da -da -da. Geography Now merch. Oh, and Geography Now mug, which I drink my coffee out of. Uh. All gifted to me by my fiance, so thanks, honey. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let's just uh, get into. The I have more geography now merch, which I will be wearing throughout my videos from here on out. So um, yeah, that's uh, it's pretty cool. Finally, I got my hand on some geography now merch. Land of smiles, and it is also the home of Julie, our next co-host. Say hi, Julie. How you doing? <laughs> Oh, also, we got uh, Anya and uh, Solom. They're also going to be in this episode Hi. later on in the is uh, Julia episode. You'll see them. Uh, if you want to see the subscribers about Thailand, you should visit. Okay. Also, <laughs> it's history? We're not Taiwan. Don't get it, don't get it confused. No. No. All right? Not confused. Hmm. Uh, I always wonder that. Like, Taiwan, then there's Thailand. Because originally, the Thai people, which I'll get into the history later on, but. They basically migrated from southern China, uh, somewhere around the Yunnan or Guangxi provinces, basically the, the southernmost provinces of today's China, into today's uh, Taiwan. Only around like the mid 7th or 8th centuries. It didn't happen, you know, it happened long ago, of course, but not so long ago. So um, that's uh, that's interesting. Yes. the And they were referred to as the Thai people, T. AI spelled T A I, similar how you would spell Taiwan, but actually there's nothing really much in common with them. It, it was thought that they they may be of Austronesian descent, but jury is still out because not much is known about the era. So let's pad see you it, shall we? I don't understand <laughs> these Thai puns. <laughs> I understand Thai, but what are, what's everything else? They are the crossroads of the Sinosphere and Indosphere and the Malay world. And then they have the inland mountains and the coastal waters. And there's so much going on. First of all, the country is located in Southeast Asia on what is commonly referred to as the Indo-Chinese Peninsula, bordering four other countries and is shaped like Dumbo the flying elephant with a really long disfigured trunk. In that long disfigured trunk, they have a long bicoastal access section on the Kra Isthmus, 
shared with Myanmar that straddles the Annaman Sea to the west and the Gulf of Thailand to the east. This trunk squeezes at its narrowest point near the city of Khan at only about 7 miles or 11.5 kilometers wide. That's not even the narrowest section though. At the very end of the border with Cambodia at the Trat province, they have a section that is only 450 meters wide until you hit the border from the coast. Oh, and speaking of provinces, the country is made up of 76 of them, known as Chang Wat. Keep in mind, all the provinces are also Chang named what? after their capitals or namesake cities, so you don't have to memorize anything extra. Also, each province has its own flag. They look pretty cool, usually based on Buddhist undertones. In addition, there are two special districts, which are cities that act with the same administrative level as a province, the capital Bangkok and Pattaya. The capital and largest city of the country, of course, is Bangkok, classified as one of the world's mega cities with a larger metropolitan population at around 14 million as of 2022. Here, of course, you can find the two Stop busiest it. airports, Bangkok's Subarnabhumi International Airport on the southeast side and Don Mueang International on the north side of the city. Bangkok also has their own port on the Chao Phraya River that oh, meanders yeah, yeah. through the city. However, the biggest and busiest shipping about. port is at Lim Chabang at the Bay of Thailand. From there, if we don't include all the cities that could be classified as connecting to the larger Bangkok metropolitan bay region, like Nontaburi, Chonburi, or Prakret, the second largest cities would be Hat Yai in the south, close to Malaysia, and Nakhon Ratchasima, just a bit up northeast from Bangkok. Nonetheless, due to the heavy demand for tourism, the second and third largest and busiest airports would be Phuket International on the west side. Yes, yeah, so, um, you know, despite Thailand nearly having, was it, 60 million people, most people just uh, want to live around, in and around uh, uh, Bangkok. Now, there's a reason for this, and it's kind of an unfortunate one, but uh, in Thailand, you mostly have tropical farming due to the climate of the area. And uh, in tropical farming, it's hard to mechanize the farming like we would see with uh, temperate areas. And you would have uh, temperate farming, uh, which is what we think of when we think of farming. Uh, you know, you would have tractors, uh, then you have combine harvesters. So you would have something to mass plow a field, to till a field, uh, to make proper furrows, to uh, collect, to uh, mass produce something. Okay, that can be done easily with machines on temperate farming. But in Thailand, you have tropical farming. Like with pineapples, ban bananas, um, and I believe this is where that uh, jackfruit comes from that um, uh, Barbie apparently likes very much. I never tried a jackfruit before, but uh, all that's nice, you know, in tropical fruit, very, you know, in demand in the world. But the problem with it, you can't really make a, a tractor or a combine harvester to mass collect bananas and uh, jackfruits. You kind of just have to get someone to go out there and pick them manually. Because of that, you know, it's hard labor, especially out in the very humid uh, tropic zones of <coughs> of Thailand. Uh, it's very hard to do and uh, very intensive and it doesn't pay well at all. It's basically a, a peasant's wage. So um, what do you do if you're in that situation? Yeah, you get the heck out of there. It's a similar situation to anywhere else where there's a tropical area, basically. Uh, think uh, Africa as well. This is why there's so many large cities in Africa uh, as well, because, you know, people just see the writing on the wall and they don't want that to be their life. And they go out, you know, into the cities to get a manufacturing job, to get an office job, to get, you know, whatever job. But this is why Bangkok is so huge, so massive of a city, because... All the peasants, let's just call them, or the village people living across Thailand, you know, would prefer not to live their lives like that. And this is why they, they really want to concentrate in and around cities. And Chiang Mai in the north. Speaking of which, the country has about 1,430 islands and Phuket being the largest one, conveniently attached by a bridge to the mainland. The country has four main domestic rail lines that reach every corner of the country, connecting to all their neighbors except Myanmar. There used to be a line now known as the Death Railway, but it was discontinued after World War II. Today, they are working on rebuilding it though. Finally, Thailand has two international land disputes, one with Cambodia over the hill of Phnom Trap with the Preah Vihar Temple temple and the other with Malaysia here on these incredibly small rocks in the middle of the sea known as Kokra and Losin Island. Losin has a small lighthouse and that's about it. Oh and it's not a dispute but Thailand also has this weird salient called the Three Pagodas Pass that juts into the Burmese town of Payatonzu along the border. This is one of the only few places where tourists are allowed to get a one-day visa to enter into Myanmar from Thailand if they wish. Just that one I day. That in Keep in mind oftentimes Thai people also divide their country into four to six cultural regions 
regions. What are these cultural regions, Julie? They are the northern Thailand, mm -hmm. Lana, and the northern eastern Thailand, Isan, central Thailand, Siam, and southern Thailand, what? Yeah, Ta Tam yeah. Wow, you never used that word. No. Wow. So how do you say Southern Thailand in Thai? Pak Thai. South Thai. It's South like literally Pak South Thai. Thai. Yeah. yeah. Correct me if anything is wrong. Please. Okay. Yeah. Now also in regards to Bangkok, Thais actually do not call it Bangkok. All right. So uh, how do you say Bangkok in Thai? Okay. So Kung Thep Mahanakorn Amon Ratana Kosin Mahintara Ayutthaya Mahadilok Pop Noparat. I'll call it Bangkok. Budirom Udom Rachaniwe. มหาสถานอมรพิมานอวตารสถิตสกทัทธิยะวิษณุกรรมประสิทธิ์ That sounds like a history lesson. The name of any city in the world with spacing. Now for many years Bangkok was listed as the world's most visited city with over 22 million tourists meaning that for the first time in the 21st century they dethroned Paris and you Julia are from there. We have uh, true, they dethroned Paris, but at the end of the day, France still gets more uh, tourists, around 80 million each year, because not everybody just goes to Paris in France. There's a lot of interesting other places in France as well. Um, and not, not bashing on Thailand, it's a very beautiful place, I'm just saying. <laughs> 24 hours of food, and we have a night market, we have an early morning market, and we have great temples. Okay, enough about Bangkok, though. Another thing you have to understand is that Thailand is administratively a constitutional monarchy. Who is the king, Julie? King Maharajalongkorn, or from the Chakri dynasty. Of Chakri dynasty, taking the throne after his father died in 2016. He is believed to be one of the richest monarchs in the world, and since 2020 has pretty much be. spent most of his time living in Bavaria, Germany, after the pandemic. As a constitutional monarchy, all government affairs are handled Screw by the, the National country. Assembly <laughs> and Prime Minister since 1932. Nonetheless, even though the king's role is restricted by the constitutional law, he still holds a huge level of power and influence mostly thanks to the Thailand Laissez Laissez Majesté laws. Yes. This means that people who criticize the king, his family, and even their pets can face heavy charges if it's strong or not. No comment. No comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Moving on. Much of what is now in Thailand started really? to develop about a thousand years ago when this person Pa Kun Singh in Talatip crowned himself the first king during the Sokotai era in 1238. Later the Ayutthaya kingdom formed and eventually unified them in 1448 under King, how do you say that? Ramaswan? Lamaswan. Lamaswan. Yeah. The northern areas known as Lana had their own things going on, divided into five kingdoms. Long story short, they had a bunch of wars with Burma, what is now Myanmar. The Portuguese were the first Europeans to come in. They called it Siam. Over time, their global interaction developed more than yet. They never in became colonized. we never been colonized. Woo! Well, there was what the time the Imperial Japan got really close to war in World War II, but it was like all right i'm taking over you you're gonna be part of my empire consider who is surrounding us that might not be a good idea okay so um how did we get to here to japan potentially uh invading thailand okay so we have to go back all the way let's not go back all the way for, like since homo erectus was uh, yeah there by the way there were homo erectus fossils found in and around caves in northern thailand but we'll skip that part we'll fast forward all the way uh, to, let's go to around where, where the Khmer ruled this area uh, before the Thai people um, descended down from southern China. So basically the Khmer uh, Empire was centered in and around Cambodia of all places. So yeah, Cambodia back in the day was quite influential and so was Burma as well, but um, more on them later. But the Khmers were also very influential in this area. <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened in the modern era, but uh, let's not talk about the Khmer Rouge. That was bad for Cambodia, let's just say. But, um, so around, like I said, in the mid 7th century, uh, as China was expanding its influence down southward, by the way, mainland Han Chinese were more from northern China in around, you know, Beijing and that area, and later on started uh, settling other areas. C colonialism. They colonized. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that happened, and once they came to the south, where Yunnan, where Guangxi is. By the way, this is Guangxi, this is Yunnan, and the Thai people are somewhere in between. In between these uh, two provinces, they came from that area. Initially, it was thought, you know, they were specifically from Yunnan, but there's also sources claiming that they're from Guangxi as well. I say probably, uh, 
they were in they were in both provinces at the time because you know they didn't really know about those two provinces at the time uh, the thai people they just lived their lives but the han chinese came down descended and um it was said that the thai people wanted to um avoid being subjugated and vassalized by the han chinese so they packed their bags and they left somewhere else and they headed south uh west in today's Thailand. And uh, this is when I, I'm pretty sure the, the Khmer people started referring to them as the Siam people. This is where the word Siam comes from. Uh, later, the Portuguese picked it up and later on, you know, that name started to get used around until we started ca calling them the Thai people today. Okay, so they are of Kra Dai descent. They speak a Kra Dai language, very unique language family group. Now, despite the fact that these uh, countries are very close to each other, they speak surprisingly different languages except for lao but basically lao is used to be a part of thailand um, as well but colonialism ha happened afterwards so these thai people would come down descend and like we, we saw they would make the um sukhothai kingdom notice how the word thai is in their sukhothai kingdom okay and that kingdom uh you know would just be chilling down here right around um this area uh, there was lana always to the north they used to be good allies lana and sukhothai uh, eventually, Sukhothai fell in, due to infighting and a little bit because of the Burmese. By the way, the Thai and the Burmese, you wouldn't think they were they had any historical beef, but man, did they have beef. But anyway, uh, Sukhothai fell around uh, the coming of the 14th century, or uh, mid-14th century, I should say. And you would actually have uh, the Ayutthaya, which is probably people have heard of the Ayutthaya before. But uh, Ayutthaya was actually a city, which you can still visit to this day. It's just like 50 kilometers north of uh, Bangkok, by the way. Uh, it's situated beautifully in between three large uh, rivers, which not only uh, gave it great trading potential as it had access to these navigable waterways, but also it defended them and basically it made a giant moat around them. So they grew in power, they grew in influence, they grew in size. And in comes the Ayutthaya which ruled, again, the areas uh, around uh, Bangkok and so southern uh, Thailand. Uh, but this time, the, the, the Lana were still there, and they were, instead of being close allies like the Sukhothai were, they starting seeing, started seeing each other more as, as enemies. Okay, So um, the Ayutthaya would prosper, it would become a very prosperous place. But in comes the Burmese... I don't know what Burma has against Thailand so much, but the Burmese came in, first siege failed, second siege failed, third siege at around the 17th century uh, didn't fail. They broke through the walls of Ayutthaya and burned it to the ground. Yeah, there were that fierce of rivals, so after it was burned to the ground... Uh, one person of Chinese descent, known as Taksim or Taskin. I, I see some sources call him Taskin. Some people call him Taksin. So Thai people out there, can you tell me which one's correct? But he was actually of Chinese descent. He was a masterful general and he took control of the area. And once again, uh, Thailand was a free place. Now, he, he, he was okay. He was a masterful uh, general, but towards the end of his life... <laughs> Um, he started going crazy. Apparently, he was like some sort of megalomaniac. And the army thought, you know, it's probably best we get rid of him. Because he was crazy. Um, so they got rid of him and executed him. And uh, the Chakri dynasty was installed uh, right around uh, the mid-18th century. Okay. And now we heard that Thailand was never colonized. Uh, it now, Thailand, because of its geography, notice these large open plains and nice mountains surrounding them, uh, g gave it a perfect geography for centralization. And they also had have navigable rivers. So this is the perfect formula for centralization. See, the mountains and hills surrounding them protect them from uh, any incoming uh, you know, force. Uh, also jungles as well, which is even better. Uh, so they protect the outer rim of central Thailand. Now, since the central fields are flat and open, it's easily it's easy for people to trade with each other, uh, especially with navigable rivers. So eventually, you would develop a nation, a proper nation, and uh, Thailand was 
very much a centralized area, that and the strong rule of the Chakri dynasty. So when the British and the French, as we saw, started colonizing the area, we know the British took over much of so southern Asia, India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Burma nowadays, and the French actually took over large parts of Indochina, Vietnam, Laos, uh, or people call it Lao, okay, I'll call it Lao, uh, and like Cambodia and stuff, okay, so, now, uh, it wasn't so much that the British and the French couldn't, if they really wanted to, take over the place, because, uh, yes, the British and the French were still much more te technologically advanced and everything, but the ties were very centralized, so you couldn't really divide and conquer them. So that wasn't an option. The only option is to try to fight them, which you might win at the end of the day. But you will also take heavy losses. So that's probably best to be avoided. And even if you win, let's say the British won, and they would move right up against uh, French territory. That would make them uneasy, and now they have to, you know, potentially come into conflict with the French. Probably best to just avoid that. Same goes for, like, the French. Probably best to just avoid that as well. And so they kept Thailand kind of like a buffer in between those two powers. And Thailand, because one, because of strong centralization, because of a united nationality, uh, because of somewhat difficult terrain... Uh, masterful diplomacy, some say, of the Chakri dynasty, uh, they were uh, never colonized. True, never colonized. Not because they, they couldn't have been, because luck of the draw, I would say. Strong centralization because of their geography, uh, strong rule, you know, everything worked out at the time, and they ended up being a uh, buffer, as you can see right there, between the French and uh, the English. They managed to avoid uh, being colonized, so... So that all happens, and here we uh, come into the modern era, World War One and then World War II. Uh, World War II, the, the Japanese uh, come in, and they want to just uh, get through them to go into Myanmar. Initially, Thailand was, you know, against the Japanese rule, but later on, they just kind of accepted it, and they let them through into Myanmar. But as we know, the Japanese eventually lost World War II, and... Um, a Siam, as it was known back in the day, uh, became its own uh, country. Uh, there was a period of a military junta, like from the 19, uh, say, say, 30s to up to like 1990. It was like a 60 year rule of the military junta before we had proper democratization and more powers being taken away from you know the monarchy and into the uh, uh, to national assemblies and to constant you know what we think of today as modern nation states. Uh, but there's still a bit of, you know, uneasiness going on in uh, Thailand. The military junta is still there, by the way. So hopefully they don't pull a Myanmar and there's a, you know, a military coup happens. Let's just... So probably a lot of people would prefer, you know, Thailand just, you know, remains open for uh, for more tourism and uh, don't be like Myanmar, let's just say. Because their economy is doing very well. Nowadays, Myanmar... Yeah. Despite the fact that Myanmar has similar good geography like Thailand, Myanmar is just doing effed up stuff, so we'll see. That might not be a good idea. Oh, yeah. Okay, but you have to give me free passage and join us against the Allied powers. Okay, fine, sure, whatever. Do it. I officially declare war on the US and Britain. Oh, I am not delivering this news to them. Hey, allies, I totally didn't mean to declare war on you guys. It was just a joke to make it look like we weren't against Japan. Wait, you declared war on me? Oh, I wasn't even paying attention, but uh, okay, sure. Woo! Saved by indifference. Hey guys, remember Aaron? Uh, he was in the Sullivan Talk episode. Haha. <laughs> and yeah, they got by. Yeah, never colonized, even with Japan. Well, in any case, with six UNESCO heritage sites, over 40,000 temples, Thailand is never short of notable places to see. And with that, uh, Som, why don't you take this, the notable places of Thailand? Som, you got this. We're out. Okay, so my most favorite place in Thailand, Phi Phi, that's like on the south of <laughs> Thailand. It's a Sorry. very beautiful <laughs> island. Chiang Mai, definitely visit. It has a lot of culture. Chiang Rai, that's like a place that you can actually Fence. visit like a lot of elephant. They have like an elephant, what is that called? Like sanctuary. And you can also like see tribe people at um in a mountain in the north. Ayutthaya was capital city of Thailand like 100 years ago before 
before they moved to Bangkok. Or old temple building, old palace. On the west is um, the city called Kanchanaburi that has a lot of beautiful waterfall. In the central of Thailand is called Lopbuli. That's like a city that's monkey everywhere. It's pretty interesting. People are not gonna rob you. It's gonna be monkey that try to steal stuff from you. It's really I've seen those but videos. You gotta be careful if you go to that city. My favorite place that I always go is called Khao San Road. And then there's a lot of street food there on that um, street. True. You just <laughs> visit. Thank you, Som. Well, we are just getting started because part of the reason Thailand is so colorful is because naturally it just is that way. That means. Also, is it true that like Thai people eat a lot of like insects and stuff? I don't know about you, but I would stay the hell away from those kind of things but we move on okay. to the next segment so thanks to its location in the tropics thailand is no stranger to extreme nature conditions you'll definitely see the side of thailand if visiting thailand is located at the convergence of three major tectonic plates the australian indian and eurasian plates with numerous fault lines cracking mostly throughout the west and northern parts of the country these fault zones are essentially what create the shield of mountain ranges like the dangrek pichabun the donna and the thai highlands where you can also find the highest peak of the country doi intanon in between these mountains you have two incredibly lush and fertile flat areas the central plain known as the chao praia river valley and to the east korat plateau where you can find the longest river fully within thailand the chi river otherwise thailand shares Where's the mighty mekong river on the border with Laos. the largest natural lake in thailand is way down south Songkla oh, lake which is divided into three parts mekong. and it does have an opening to the bay of thailand at the bottom part by the town of Songkla, which is why the lake has partly salty brackish water otherwise up in the mountains in the west the sinakarin dam is the largest reservoir in the country at over 17 billion cubic meters of water finally the country is split up mostly into two separate climate zones the the upper part of the nation mostly lies in the tropical savanna or tropical monsoon mm. zone, whereas the Kra Isthmus falls in the tropical rainforest zone. The okay, so um, interesting part about uh, Thai geography actually makes it quite a naval a superpower in the region. It actually has, believe it or not, an aircraft carrier. That's right. Thailand is one of the few countries in the world with an aircraft carrier, giving it immense naval capabilities. Probably has one of the strongest navies easily in the entire Southeast Asia, uh, due in large to the fact that since it centralized its um, country long ago, they didn't really need to worry about the interior of the country as much like other parts, like say Indonesia. Indonesia, despite having, you know, all those islands and everything and natural harbors never really had such a powerful navy because they always had to worry about separatism and internal strife. So they always had to invest more in the army than anything else. And not much was given to the Navy. Same similar thing goes for India. India was always constantly divided, and there's like strong civil strife beyond uh, in India, and they never really had a chance to grow and expand their navy instead. So, but since Thailand was centralized long ago and uh, was independent, uh, they ended up with the strongest navy in the in the region, uh, due in large also to its uh, na natural harbors and large openings to them. <clears throat> to the sea now they do have a bit of separatism towards the south because uh i believe they're like muslims uh to the south but when it comes to interesting uh, future developments in thailand there is the proposed uh, thailand canal you know that instead of going down through the straits of malacca ships would just go uh through somewhere here now there's environmental concerns because that would cut through a lot of forest as well also there's more like i said my minorities down towards the south so they probably wouldn't appreciate that um as well so but if it does get built some that would make i believe one of the largest canals in the world the country has three main seasons throughout the year the cool dry season between november and february the hot season from march to may and the monsoon season from june to october during this time the country is prone to the occasional typhoon on the east coast or Get cyclones typhoon. West. quick terminology <laughs> recap cyclones are for the southern hemisphere and indian ocean whereas typhoon is for east asian pacific Ta typhoons <laughs> oh you mean <laughs> typhoons well i just know that thailand is very humid and a lot of mosquitoes no, 
I have a really bad allergic to mosquitoes. So when you go back to Thailand, it's like... It's like... Allergic, you're allergic to mosquitoes? Allergic to mosquitoes? the motherland. I know. Well, in any case, Thailand That's is classified as brutal. newly industrialized country, making the eighth largest economy in Asia. Second, Southeast Asia after Indonesia. When it comes to business, Thailand is a hustler and we're good at it. Walking down the alleyways in Bangkok, you will find almost any type of vendor or profession, whether legitimate or questionable. We all we always have legitimate industry. Yeah, what are you talking about? People always go towards the wacky side though. It's like, yeah, that's a stereotype. For one, since the 80s, Thailand has okay. designated 25% <laughs> of land area of forest protection and 15% of timber production. In addition, they are huge on the electronic sector, making up almost a fifth of all exports. Now here's where things start to kind of get into the gray zone-ish area. For Thailand, much of the economic activity and numbers are hard to accurately calculate because there is an entire informal sector with underground market activity. This is sometimes called a shadow economy. This could be anything from gray economy? reported or misreported vendor sales or illicit black market dealings. Thailand lies, everybody knows this, within the Golden Triangle. We already talked about this in previous episodes, overlapping three countries in Southeast Asia, which are widely known as the second largest opium producing area on earth after the Golden Crescent in the Middle East. Nonetheless, the government has been cracking down on these types of dealings and has been putting a heavier emphasis on a more positive positive sectors like tourism, the most obvious one. Thailand tourism industry makes up nearly a fifth of GDP today and is projecting to grow to 30% by 2030. Instagram once ranked Thailand as one of the top ranked photograph locations on earth. Thailand offers many different types of tourism from medical, gastronomical, sport, and even nature tourism. And uh, speaking of nature, here's uh, Gary Harlow to explain. Yeah, uh, Caleb's not here, but uh, you know, <laughs> the hat turns anybody into Gary Harlow. So uh, what's going on, man? Ian, it's your turn. Oh, oh, you hold a man. Oh, whoa. So thanks to their tropical climate, <laughs> Thailand is definitely <laughs> brimming with creatures of all sorts. There are 156 national parks, 50 eight wildlife sanctuaries, 67 non-hunting areas, and 120 forest parks. Now this makes up a third of the entire country's territory. Now there's over 280 mammal species. Everything from leopards to Malaysian sun bears, gibbons, macaques, the Indo-Chinese subspecies of tigers, or tigers. <laughs> 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 That'll wake you up in the morning. And so many lines, bones, too many. The Siamese cat actually originated here. I always thought it was Chinese, but no, it's here. it's here, Thailand. Now here you can also find the smallest mammal on earth called the Kittis hognose bat or the bumblebee bat. Now Thailand Mini COVID bat. the world's first and largest crocodile farm. Now finally, we cannot forget the national animal, the Thai elephant. Today there's about 3,500 sure elephants to that, that are in captivity and about a thousand estimated elephants in the wild. Now elephants are widely revered in Thailand and have played an important role in the country's history and especially he, to the yeah, royal family the flag. where the white elephant is their symbol and the king specifically Ayutaya's flag a small number of white thai elephants alive they they're presented pink. at special events and, and so forth and whatnot El thai people and elephants they're in, they like it to they you know what i you know what i mean now it looks like i'm, I'm gonna have to elephase my way out of here <laughs> So I'm just saying, hey, what is happening to me? Thank you, Gary. Yes, Thailand's land is never short of provision. At one time, they were even the number one provider of rice in the world. And today, their cow homilet has been declared the world best rice seven times out of 13 world rice conferences. Thailand is heavy on gastro diplomacy. Which Send me some rice. Let me try it. I love rice. Thai program launched in 2002. Basically, it's a culinary diplomacy initiative that they fund in order to promote Thailand via food across the world. This is why you can find Thai restaurant in some of the most remote places on earth. Even like the Arctic Svalbard, Norway has a- Well, here in Bosnia, I don't know of any Thai restaurants. So we have Chinese restaurants, Japanese restaurants, and uh, heck even Indian restaurants, but no Thai restaurants. So anybody, any like restaurants out there, people watching me, uh, you can come to Bosnia and uh, open a Thai restaurant. I know I would- Go there as well. Just don't serve me any insects. If there's any insects in there, I'm I'm out. <laughs> okay. I'm just Thai no. restaurant. To talk no, about food, when it comes uh, to why insects. Don't we bring up Anya. Anya. 
So guys, sorry, I like Looney Tunes, so that's my commentary. Just don't sue me. That's all, folks. <laughs> See, when the culture is so huge in Thailand, we never sleep on the street, off the street, in a small alley. I think most people going out instead of cooking in. Like every region, they have their own food culture. Like in the north part of Thailand, Khao Soi. Khao Soi is like a kind of noodle, curry noodle. On top of the noodle, they're gonna have the crispy noodle on top of that noodle again. And when you eat it, you mix it all together with the pickle and red onion. Noodle on noodle. Noodle on noodle. The sauce, I would say the most spicy Thai food. They have like gang Thai prab, cooking, which is, it could be ribs or ground pork. Central, I think the most normal thing that people know is green curry or red curry. Khao man gai, pad si iu, pad thai, tom yam. Like the most popular ones you find at Thai restaurants yes. are central? Like normal stuff. The northeast, my region, they have like a million kind of papaya salad. The it's gonna be like sweet and it comes with peanut or you can have isan or lao dice which is that come with like fermented anchovy fish sauce which is we call it tam pala or like fermented crab fermented fish sauce another dish is like lard and they usually have it with sticky rice the main dessert for me i think is mango sticky rice Ooh. i have my favorite spot mevari i like I mango at <laughs> Park Soi Tong Lo, that which is the best mango sticky rice in Thailand. Papa's new mangoes. Thank you, Anya. Two other oh, things like the we ones should we also mention. Thailand is one of the largest entomophagous countries on earth. That is, nations that have a high rate oh, no. of insect consuming. And you can find that in the street stalls pretty much everywhere on Kalsen Road. And it's like a very no, snack no, that you can just no, enjoy. Also, uh, Red Bull I'm was invented in Thailand. Gating dang. And it is stronger out there, isn't it? Like, way stronger. There was actually a report okay. from Zenith <laughs> International that stated Thai people consume more energy drinks than any other country in the world, averaging at about 11 Point four liters per person. That's four times more than us Americans. Well, we do have a lot of energies. Speaking of the energy of the people, that brings us to the next segment, the... That's Anya, Som, Julie, answer the question, what is a Thai person? Go. Thai person is like kind. We smile a lot. That's why we call land of smiles. Religious? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. Religious. Slavic yeah, lands are not the land of smiles. We are an empath. <laughs> <laughs> We're an empath. We could be crazy sometimes. <laughs> yeah. One thing that's for sure, Thais are very proud of being Thai. Every day at 8 p.m. and 6 p.m., the national anthem is played on Lao speakers. Everybody just stops. And people would just stop for 40 seconds and stand there until it's over. Anyway, the makeup of Thailand is very interesting too, and here's how it kind of breaks down. For one, Thailand has about 70 million people, and the government Seven. officially recognizes 62 <laughs> ethnic communities naturally found within the country. The largest group of peoples, of course, are the ethnic Thai people at somewhere around 86% of the population. However, it's a little more complicated. The Thais are kind of broken up into specific groups, the largest ones being the Korat Thai or the Central Thai people that are spread throughout most of the central parts of the country. They make up about 39% of the population. Mm -hmm. From there, the next largest group would be the Isan or Thai Lao, mostly found near the border of Lao. They make up about 28% of the population. But what's from the there, you have the Kong difference Wang at about 10% and Southern Thai they at about speak different 9%. languages? The largest non-Thai groups though would be Malays, mostly in the border with Malaysia at about 4%, mm. Cambodian the or Malays. Khmer peoples, mostly in the, the border with Cambodia, make up about 2%, and about 8% of the country belongs to other groups, a huge chunk of this being Chinese. Thailand currency is bought. They use the types of ANC plug outlets, and the drive is on the left side of the road. Yeah, they simply just did it because most of their neighbors were doing it, and they just wanted to join along, not because of British influence. Never colonized. Never. Now, here's where things get a little confusing. Really? Thailand actually has the largest Chinese community outside of Thailand at somewhere around 10 million or about a seventh of the population. However, this group of Chinese people or Sino-Thai people are actually fully assimilated into Thai society and often just call yeah, themselves remember, Thai. remember Taxi? They are mostly from southern China called Bao Chu in the Guangdong province. After years of intermingling, geneticists speculate that somewhere around 40% of the population of Thailand could have at least one Chinese ancestor. Today, most of them have actually adopted Thai last names or at least use Chinese last names and add Thai words to the end due to a law that states that people are not allowed to have the same last name if they are not related. Well, in any case, the Thai language is completely different from Chinese. It's actually part of the Thai language group which is related to Shan language in Myanmar and Lao in Laos. So I mean, where How the much Thai Lao from? can you guys understand? I would say like 70, 60%? 70. 
60, 70 percent. Would you say Lao people can understand Thai better? Than... Of course, yeah. Yeah. because they, they consume our yeah, entertainment and stuff. So the Thai alphabet or Abu Gita is made up of 44 consonant symbols and 16 vowel indicators. Every Thai person knows the 44 pictures that go with the 44 consonants of the Thai script from G, chicken, to H, owl. Otherwise, Thai is a tonal language spoken with. Yeah, I was told. Uh... That this script is easier than you think to learn, but um, I don't know, jury's still out on that one. I would still say it's for a Western person, uh, probably it's a, a bit difficult to learn their script. Uh, language even more so, but script as well. Five tones, meaning you can make an entire sentence using just one syllable, but changing the tone. For example. Oh, I'm not doing that. Mean... <laughs> so that that's is like. My 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 no so doesn't burn. I love this one. My, my, pa, pa, my, pa, my. Pa, pa. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna add subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> now officially Thailand has freedom of religion. However, the vast majority are Buddhist at second about largest Buddhist country in the world. Population. This makes Thailand the, country with the second highest I Buddhist think. population in the world after China, <laughs> even though China is only about twenty percent Buddhist. It's interesting though. Thai Buddhism has a lot of traditional Thai folklore and Hindu overlap within it. Within temples and shrines, you might see many Hindu or folk deities depicted like Brahm. Yeah, like uh, much of uh, Southern Asia in general at the time, I believe this was during the Sukhothai rule, uh, that's when uh, Hinduism was prominent. Even as far out places such as Malaysia and Indonesia. So yeah, Hinduism used to be quite influential at its time. So, yeah. What is the spirit house? If you put it there and then do some kind of ritual, you know, ceremony to bless in that house. For so a that, blessing. Yeah, for a blessing so that that spiritual figure will protect your home hmm. from harm. And you find them everywhere in Thailand. And they usually give them offerings like flowers, incense, fruits, and for some reason a lot of them have like strawberry fanta. That's like a thing oh, I see oh, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's because of the color. <laughs> The color yeah. red, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thailand also has a heavy culture of short-term Buddhist ordination in which many men are encouraged to serve as monks for a period of time. Monks are not allowed to touch women unless if it's like an emergency, like if their mom is dying or something. Now, going to Thailand, you will notice how much the royal family is integrated into daily life. Every neighborhood has a shop and sell approved images of them, and they're always on the wall. We won't get too much mm. into it because it'll take way too long to Kim explain. Kim It's vibes. a hot button issue amongst the people, but essentially, Thailand has had many controversies controversial monarchy related incidents 30 coup d'etats we're not going to get much more into this if you want to say stuff right in turkey like, otherwise Whoa. we're going to just move on <laughs> Too many. no comment no comment yeah <laughs> well let's move on okay what better way to move on paul mm -hmm. sport sports yes and with that here's art with the sports part it's geography sports time <laughs> He's so light. All right, so let's start off with the Asian Games. Bangkok has hosted them more than any other country in Southeast Asia. Moreover, Thailand has hosted more SEA Games as well. Thailand also ranks high in badminton competitions, which is actually one of my favorite sports. I like badminton a lot. Did you know that? No. When I was in high school, I used to play a lot. For some reason, I always liked hitting that little birdie. Plen I played it once, but I was birdie. terrible at it. <laughs> Thailand usually ranks number one in Southeast Asia for Football. Soccer. That's right, it's football. These two guys here are probably the most famous footballers in Thailand. Alexander Albin is actually the only F1 racer known in Thailand. Thailand in total has 35 medals in the Olympics and 35 more than gold. I don't know. Bosnia. Five. Five times two. <laughs> two fives. Math is Ten. Fun. The three events that Thailand has done well in the Olympics, weightlifting, boxing, and Taekwondo. And speaking of combat Muay Thai. Sports, the moment you have all been waiting for. Best Kickboxing is from here. Muay Thai, known as the art of... Let's be honest, like the first time we were introduced, the first time at least I was introduced uh, to Thai culture was of course through Kickboxer, the legendary Van Damme. A movie, you know, uh, Tong Po, which is, by the way, played by a Moroccan-Belgian guy, and he wasn't actually Thai at all. Moroccan-Belgian guy, so interesting. <laughs> Tong Po was uh, played by him, but th that's when I was introduced to Thailand and everything, and in that movie, I was like, oh, this place is beautiful. And, of course, later on, I found out about Ong Bak, and, and its uh, sequels, though the sequels weren't that good, but Ong Bak, the original, was like... One of my favorite fighting movies of all time. Probably only beat, beaten out by like Bruce Lee movies. That's about it. So 
<laughs> if you haven't seen the movie Long Back, I should. It's with Tony Jaa in it, and it's like amazing. It's awesome. Um, I only wish they would make movies like that nowadays, but I don't know. Uh, kind of like the action movie industry uh, part of the film industry is kind of dying out, I think personally. But that's just I'm I'm going off topic completely. But yeah, Muay Thai is from here. Kickboxing is from here. Eight limbs. You can hit with your fists, your shins, your elbows, and your knees. Yeah, that's right. Uh, they would actually use uh, knees. Now, uh, I believe in Muay Thai, they call the knee the sledgehammer of the body because it actually has the most power of anything. If you use it properly, you can deliver up to 800 kilograms of force. So it is the sledgehammer of the body. Uh, when it comes to the elbows, it's actually the sharpest part of your body, by the way. If you feel around like your body, your knuckles and everything, notice like how the elbow is pretty dang sharp it's pointy isn't it so if you use it properly you can actually if you use it very properly you can actually cut people and uh, cause them to bleed with your elbows so muay thai i know <laughs> i studied a bit of muay thai uh, i did take karate when i was much younger i was a blue belt but um i don't know muay thai just definitely seems more physical i'm just saying and then pow the match begins Whatcha? But do not touch people on the top of the head. It's a big no-no in Thai culture. Hmm. Oh, speaking of fighting, let's talk about Krabi Krabon. This is a traditional Thai weapon martial art form. The bodyguards of the royal family must be highly trained in this martial art form as well. Competitions and performances are really cool to watch. And finally, Thailand used to take part in this unique elephant polo competition known as the King's Cup. In 2018 though, it was announced that the competition would be discontinued after completing Complaints filed by PETA. No more elephant polo. Well, they definitely complained about the elephants, but not the horses. Hmm. What's up with that, PETA? Tarchin's segment on Geography Now is never going to be ended by PETA. That's it for me. Cheers. Thank you, Art. Well, fun fact about Thais. We're very competitive with beauty pageants. On any given day, there will be probably be some kind of beauty pageants going on with different types of people. And there's a lot of expectations. So much to talk about with Thailand's culture. So with that, here's Random Hannah to give you just a few more general overview factoids of Thai culture. Hi, guys. It's good to be back. And remember, you can get a Random Hannah shirt at geographynow.com. He's wearing it. First thing, I have a Keith shirt, Thailand, by the way. If you are on the phone receiving Thai text, you might see the number five a lot. Because <laughs> in Thai, the number five is pronounced ha. So they're really just laughing. Ha ha ha. Five, 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 five. Every Thai at birth is given a nickname in addition to their regular name. It's based on an old superstition that evil spirits, or be sat, these evil spirits are apparently constantly on the lookout for newborn children, and these nicknames apparently confuse them. Common nicknames include Creepy. things like tadpole, fat, mouse, swan, and orange. Cat. At special occasions, really? you will often see people wearing traditional clothing. For women, a common thing you can see is the sing. It's an ankle length silk tube skirt. And for men, you can find a chong kraven, which is a lower body silk wrap pant garment. There are so many quirks and customs in Thailand. Everywhere you'll find the nung kwak. It's the beckoning lady statue that is said to bring business and love. She always does things. Business, the number eh? love, nine eh? <laughs> is considered lucky. Amulet culture and lucky charms are huge here. Taxis and bus drivers have altars on their dashes. Ooh. Potted plant culture or Do they get plus one to intelligence? A huge thing here as well. It dates back to the Ayutthaya period in which people needed to keep plants and crops portable in case floods washed them away. Thai people are obsessed with aromatherapy. They're most popular in the form of herbal bombs or nasal sprays. This right here is called a yadon. Thank you. Well, funnily enough, I actually kind of have uh, some aromatherapy here. I actually use this in my food a bit. It's strange because in Bosnia, this is kind of like some sort of honey as propolis. I uh, put it in my like bread and stuff while I eat it and it kind of like, you know, uh, it lets you breathe easier, I was told, but my mom like suggested it to me since, um, you know, I'm, I'm, some, I'm somewhat very sensitive to, to smells and this kind of helps me. So, uh, yeah, that's just something probably you didn't know about me either. Yeah, I'm very sensitive to smells and uh, it kind of 
helps me. Thank you, Geography so. Pam, for sending this on Fan Flag Friday. Maybe you I should try some of those. People with these shoved up their noses everywhere in Thailand. Did you shove this in your nose and then give it to me? Not that one. I took the green one. Thais are also really into astrology. I'm an Aquarius. I don't know what that means, but this even ties into every day of the week. Each day of the week has a color code pertaining to each astrology god. So you might find people wearing more of a certain color. I just on noticed a it says day. WTF in addition, there. there are what a series the of taboos <laughs> and traditions that follow each day. For example, on Wednesday, you're not allowed to cut things. So often barber shops are closed on Wednesdays. Huh, funnily enough, we have similar things like that in Bosnia. Some, you know, rules like that. Apparently I can't clip or cut my nails on Sundays for some reason. We're also told to not kill spiders in the house as well. So every time, every time there'd be like a spider in our house, yes, there are spiders in Europe as well. Uh, they're not that big, of course, or that dangerous. But every time my parents would actually take a sponge or something, grab it and then throw it outside, you know, not like squishing it like I usually do because I hate spiders. <laughs> I have arachnophobia. Another thing you did probably didn't know about me. I don't, I don't like spiders at all. So oh, just thinking about those funnel webs and the, the tarantulas. If, if that was near me, I'll, I'll go insane. I'll, I will murder it. I'll burn the house down. If I see it, I do not like it. Look at them. They're just like mistakes. That's why is that a thing? <laughs> but whatever. But we have, yeah, similar superstitions uh, like that as well. Apparently we can't whistle in the house because if you whistle, you'll call a dog in and we don't keep dogs in the house as well. Mo probably mostly due to Islam because in Islam dogs are haram. And it just kind of, even though Bosnia is a very, very secularized Muslim place, uh, some things still stick. Uh, so, but people do own dogs, but it's usually they're super secular. They're maybe like atheists or agnostics or whatever, or they just keep them outside. You know, they just don't let it in the house. And finally, Thailand has so many festivals and events they celebrate. It would take forever to list them all, but here are a few of the biggest ones. The Magic Tattoo Festival, Festival of Lights, the Monkey Buffet Festival. I want to go to that one. Buddhist festivals like Buddha's birthday and Maga Puja. The largest and most popular one, though, is the Songkran Festival. It is celebrated throughout the We don't have like any South festivals in Bosnia. Asia. People so shoot water boring. guns and splash each other with water and everyone gets soaked. I know who I would shoot a water gun at my husband because he is hot <laughs> anyways whatever here's okay. this music segment water gun your husband <laughs> hey i have a shirt <laughs> here i'm back in the wonderful state of florida just because well i'll uh, just a million times throw it in future California. episodes but anyways thailand knows music and it seems everything in life incorporates it even before muay thai matches they play music as a Fighters do their ritual dances. Thais will probably say the two largest traditional I saw Tung Po do that. Luk Tung and Mor Lam. Luk Tung is a country folk style with lyrics that reflect the trials and tribulations of rural life. Every Thai person will say these people are probably the most iconic folk artists. Otherwise, Mor Lam is mostly performed in the northeast part of the country, close to Laos. It is described as being folk but faster with a funk feel. A funky feel feel if you will. Usually folk, folk, folk music metal? is accompanied by traditional instruments such as these. I'm going to point to this list right here. Thailand dance is also pretty crazy to watch, especially Kone. It is Thailand's traditional mask dance done with golden costumes. I've seen some YouTube videos on it. Gold. Everybody loves gold. In fact, most Thai people are capable of doing complex double jointed dance gestures. I don't know, is that does this mean I'm double jointed? Otherwise, since the nineties, Thai pop or mm. T pop has been I can dislocate my shoulder by the way and relocate industry. it. Some top performers you skill I have. <laughs> include this list right here. And before I go, one band in particular that I must mention because well I'm Keith and I love metal bands and we all know this, but at this point, um I think there's I know a band them. from Thailand which is called Retrospect. And they have a song called Betrayed. Really great song. I've heard really them. great band. Uh, the Sumerian Core I think they era of like... Yeah, but I think they uh, sing in English, so... 
Yeah. Bands like Born of Osiris and those influences spread throughout the world. And But anyways, that's it for me. Thank you so much all to the Thai subscribers. You guys are really great. And um, that's it for me. Thank you, Keith. Well, that was a lot. A lot. What are your favorite festivals of Thailand? Well, it's in Gop. Yeah. It's kind of like the Burning Man kind of party or <laughs> even Coachella yeah. or like if you love music, mm -hmm. definitely, you would definitely go to the full moon party in okay. Gopangan. Well, one thing that Thailand is definitely known for is the way how they interact with the rest of the world. Which brings us to the final chapter of this episode, the... Didn't we already just do this? Or am so, I due to their location and experiencing culture, deja Thailand vu? Thailand has quite a history of branching out Friend zone. both to their neighbors and abroad. One thing's for sure, Thailand has definitely made themselves known throughout the world. Here's how kind of plays out. For one, Thailand is of course a huge international tourism hotspot, so of course everyone from Australia to Austrians love visiting, especially during peak season during December and February when the weather is the best. Nonetheless, no shocker, China alone outnumbers all of them combined, taking up over a quarter of the entire tourist demographic. Obviously, as mentioned, Thailand has the largest Chinese population in diaspora outside of China, let alone having much of their people historically intermarry and mix with Thai people. The only hiccup in relations with China took place in the 50s when this former prime minister in instituted lots of anti-Chinese campaigns and restrictions. Also, occasionally China keeps a close eye whenever Taiwan wants to get close to Thailand as well. But today, <laughs> they are close. They share numerous bilateral agreements, Taiwan, like a free Thailand. trade zone. China is their largest import partner, their militaries cooperate, and the two are cool with each other. With that, India comes China. in, and it's more of a historic and cultural bond that dates back thousands of years within the Indosphere. Not only did the Buddhist faith migrate out of northeastern India, some argue Nepal, let's not get into that, but the Thai <laughs> language also borrows a substantial amount of words from Sanskrit, as well as Pali, the sacred language of Theravada Buddhism. India has very close extradition treaties. They have infrastructure investment deals, especially in the India-Myanmar-Thailand highway project, and they have a growing education exchange program. The U.S. has had relations with Thailand since the 19th century, when the Treaty of Amity and Commerce was signed in 1833, therefore making them the first nation in Asia to have formal diplomatic relations with the U.S. Yes, even before China. From there, relations have only grown. Later, Thailand joined CEDO, which led to the Rusk Tanat Agreement. In 2003, they were labeled a major non NATO ally. However, the closest inner circle to Thailand, though, would have to be their fellow ASEAN nation countries. Granted, they've had quite a few historical wars with the Burmese, but nonetheless, best friends. Malaysia is the second largest tourist demographic, and many have family just over the border in South Thailand. Indonesia is kind of like the mediator between them and any drama they might have on the border with Cambodia. The Philippines shares a lot of similar cultural tropes with Thailand. It's almost like just replaced the Buddhist backdrop with a Catholic. Catholic one and they are almost indistinguishable. When it comes to their best friend within this group though, nearly every single Thai person I've ever talked to has mentioned the same country, Lao. Lao is like the little sister of Thailand that has a slightly different way of doing things, but overall they totally get each other. It all started back in the 15th century in the Ayutthaya Kingdom, and you know, despite being under French Indochina and having some skirmishes on the border with Thailand and claiming that the Emerald Buddha was theirs and later installing a government that kind of favored Vietnam, regardless, they are still considered the closest relatives within the area and have deep Thais. They speak nearly intelligible languages, Deep they are both ties. predominantly Get influenced it? by Buddhism, <laughs> and after you peel back all the layers of historical trauma, they cannot deny that in the end, they will always be family and care for each other. In conclusion, Fair you're enough. the Thai people, I'm gonna head out, you guys take it, Ray, set, go. Long tail boats, street vendors, lots of good food, a lot of beautiful people, no and a lot of smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's pretty fun to party. We don't smile in Slavic. Lots of fortune tellers. Just, I don't know why. We just be simple. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so go back. That was the episode. Hope you had a good one. Thank you guys for joining. Ooh. Thank you. Togo is coming up next. But before Togo, we're actually going to go to Flag Slash and Friday. Okay, let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Fan Day. Definitely not on Friday. I'm changing up the upload schedule, just whenever. In any case, hope you liked the Thailand oh, episode. Oh, you did One fan flag day. Episode, I accidentally used the friend zone transition twice. The first time it in place yeah, of demographic. So I, I didn't, didn't go like, through deja vu. <gasps> so here's the thing. Whenever I do an episode <laughs> with people from the country, I always usually, you know, give them the script beforehand and let them kind of review it. Let me know what they think of it. And I try my best not to fully sugarcoat every episode. And originally there was a section in the episode where I wanted to talk a little bit more about the human trafficking and sex industry but the girls understandably were not really comfortable with having that in the script so i took it out instead mm -hmm. we just kind of alluded to it when i also saw that movie where like the guy was found with uh, hashish or whatever well they were in thailand you know did some hashish with the boys and apparently that was a big no-no in thailand 
And uh, I forget what the name of the movie was, but it was a good one. Uh, afterwards, his friend was trying to get him out of there because he kind of like told him to do hashish or whatever. <coughs> but he was found guilty in a Thai court and then he was sentenced to death. That's right. You, you get sentenced to death in Thailand for having... Uh, drugs so damn when we mentioned Brutal. the shadow economy of thailand in any case there's a whole other side to thailand and cultural context when it comes to the reason why they are such a sexualized country but i don't want to mislead you into anything and if you want to know more about it i suggest talking to a thai person who's comfortable addressing that topic otherwise moving on okay. this king is pretty much responsible anybody for the thai writing the system, comments as well as bringing in theravada buddhism as the main religion of thailand we didn't mention it much either but thailand has lots of fortune tellers and shamans finally many of the temples have kind of like interesting unique quirks one of them is made of glass bottles, and the white one has these creepy hands that reach up to you as you cross a bridge. Mm -hmm. In any case, if there's anything I missed, uh, write it in the comments, but we gotta move on. Hey, so, we have the same shirt. Without further, <laughs> ah, 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 dude. Start chin, you crazy puppy. Art's a little busy and he put me on dog watching duty today. Did you like being in the Thailand episode? This was, as expected, a very big and complicated country to cover. I'm so glad the Thai girls were willing to participate. That's the cool thing about LA. We actually have a Thai town. Lots of Thai people, so if you need anything Thai, we got the immediate hookup. All right, and with that, mm. let's talk about the Thai flag. The flag is a five horizontal striped I've never seen a Thai person in my life. Blue. On the bottom and top are the red so. bands, followed by two hey, indoor Gundam white Boston. bands, and a single blue band twice the... Oh, the, uh, has anyone seen that like meme where it shows like the Norwegian flag and you can make many flags out of the Norwegian flag? And, and yeah, one of those was actually like, uh, you can make the Thai flag out of it. It's interesting, but it's a nice flag, but I per, I, per, I like the one with the elephant because I just like elephants. So, so maybe like put an elephant in the middle. I don't know. The do whatever you want though <laughs> individual ones the colors allude to the three important variables that make up the nation the red standing for the people of thailand the white standing for religion and finally the blue which stands for the monarchy which plays a huge ceremonial role in thailand's culture and identity just think of it you this don't. way the flag kind of looks like an open mouth <laughs> sorry but uh it's known as the land of smiles and i, I like how she's smiling and he's just like not having it <laughs> he must be slavic i guess Thailand's culture and identity just think of it this way the flag kind of looks like an open mouth you know with the gums or the lips and the teeth and the oh. side of the mouth i wonder why they're called the land of smiles thailand has had quite a few transitions in their vexillology the first known banner was just a red flag from there there were a bunch of other variants usually depicting a it's all white about blood. elephant which was the symbol of the royal family and finally ah, in 1917 elephant. the one you see before you but the thing is in thailand the emblem oh, actually has badass. a longer history the emblem depicts a Hindu and Buddhist mythological beast, Garuda. According to mythology, Garuda is a giant oh. hybrid half man, half bird. I know like Garuda is from like video games where you fight like some sort of giant bird. So I guess that's what it's from. It's from Hinduism. Creature. The head, wings, or and Buddhism. talons of an eagle, as well as a human torso and sometimes human arms. Sometimes depicted as the most powerful of all winged creatures and as such is regarded as the king of the birds. In Buddhist literature, he lives in the legendary Himavanta forest, sometimes is considered semi-divine or supernatural. And so hence, Garuda has been a symbol of the royal family and of Thailand ever since. There is a variant of this emblem as well that has a banner underneath Garuda and it has the the royal warrant. It's used for business between the royal family. The translation of the Thai writing reads, by appointment to his majesty, the king. So there you go. That's pretty much the so only like emblem a kid Thailand crying has outside. Had. And it goes back centuries. And that's about it. You know, the flag, the emblem, we're good to go. Now you know what time it is. It's time for Geography. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I don't know if you hear that, but come on, kid. Life's not that hard. Anyway, I'll thank you all for uh, watching the video. Um, I'll get back into making videos soon. There's still a lot of things I have to do. Uh, but this summer, I do be expecting a lot of videos. I plan to um, release a, a video every other day, let's say. So every two days, a new video. So uh, do be expecting that. I'll see you guys in future episodes. Thank you all for watching. And as always, take care.